Okay, so this is Johnny Cash's Hurt. Widely recognized as one of his greatest recordings, and yet many seem to miss that there's a bit more to it than these few basic open chords you see over and over on the internet. For example, and I'm quite sure nobody noticed this, but the audio I just played you, there was something missing. An essential element that makes this song sound so good, and without it, it just doesn't have the same magic to it. And the same thing happens in the chorus. Throughout this entire song, there's interesting elements to zoom in on. Not to mention that video clip. It sends shivers down the spine, and accompanied by that raw, broken voice and that minimalistic production makes the last story he told about regret and pain one of the most beautiful goodbyes ever recorded. So the magic starts immediately when you play the first few notes. It's where you play the chords A minor, C, and D. But we play the chords arpeggiated, resulting into this. And we immediately hear it's a sort of dressed down acoustic version of the original. Released in 1994 and written by Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails, and without a doubt is equally as touching as Cash's version, and it's clear that many choices in the arrangement and production are directly influenced by the original. Okay, so before we add that magical ingredient to the mix, let's listen to that first guitar one more time. It has a mellow and warm sound, and every chord is picked exactly three times, all with that same rising arpeggio. But at the same time, it's rough. Listen to this. Andy. Do you hear that rattling of the strings? Andy. We guitarists call that fret buzz, and it happens quite easily on the guitar, actually. Do you hear it? <laughs> and if you listen closely, you hear it happening throughout this entire song, over here, at the end of the chord. Or the second note of this song, actually. Hear it? And somehow, I never heard it before, it doesn't bother me, and I'm sure it never bothered anyone. Like back in the day, it wasn't uncommon to hear these imperfections in recordings, but in modern productions, producers tend to go for the perfect take or just edit mistakes out entirely. But apparently, not Rick Rubin, the man who got Johnny Cash to sing this song in the first place. We burned a CD for Johnny Cash, and you sent him uh, of different songs. Of like songs to consider recording. Yeah. He kept it in, and you could argue that it adds to the raw and gritty character, making the track feel alive or or lived, maybe. Just like Mr. Cash's voice himself at the time of the recordings, almost literally singing on his last breath. And of course, I'm not saying that guitarist Mike Campbell or Smokey Hormel did this on purpose. They are some of the finest players out there. And no, it's not Johnny Cash himself playing, by the way. But I just think it's funny to notice that something that many guitar teacher would call bad practice is so clearly present on such a popular song. But as I said, this is only half of the story. I just named two guitarists because there is actually another guitar playing, and it couldn't sound more different. So where the first one was warm and mellow, this one, well, let's have a listen. It is very bright and almost sharp to the ears, more pronounced high frequencies, more attack. It's clear they used a different guitar and a different microphone. Listen to the differences back to back. That's nuts, right? So we call this technique double tracking. And this means you record the same thing twice to beef things up. And often it's exactly the same part played twice, but here are some differences. Let's have a listen. The A minor is played exactly the same. But on the C and the D, the second guitar doesn't play three times, but four times. Sometimes he doesn't hammer on to F-sharp, by the way, but he keeps that top string open mostly, and that's different as well, creating a D-sus-2 chord. But together with that regular D from the other guitar, there's actually two major second intervals in that one chord. From D to E, and from E to F-sharp. And played together, it sounds just heavenly. Creating a D, Add nine chord that works so well with this song. But here's the thing, because guitar two is only coming out of the left speaker, and guitar one is exclusively coming out of the right speaker. And it's when you play them together when it sounds just like heaven. Have a listen. Whew. 
that's super cool, right? You are immersed in between these lovely dry and rough guitars. And precisely because the guitars sound so different, they work so well together. Spaced apart, we get this big white sound that sounds crisp, clear, but also dark at the same time. And the best thing about it is that it leaves a lot of room for Mr. Cash's vocals, which are exactly in the middle. Oh, and also the guitars lowers massively in volume when he starts singing. I think they are side chains to the vocal. The guitars are just there to support that beautiful voice after all. <laughs> so that's the verses mostly. Uh, the piano joins in too with a thick A minor chord. But then we go to the chorus where a lot of cool things happen. So in essence, the chords are super basic. It's just A minor, F, C, and G. Yes, the four chords. What's also interesting to notice, by the way, is that harmonically we're shifting directions because where the D major chord in the verses could be seen as a borrowed chord or modal interchange from the Dorian mode, clearly made visible by that F sharp note being present in the chord, now we're going to the natural minor scale or the Aeolian mode due to the presence of that F major chord. All right, let's move on. But that's not all there is to it. So again, there's two guitars, one playing left, one playing right. And the right guitar just plays the chord super minimalistic with just a few strings and with that warm and mellow sound. Even the rhythm can't be more grounded, picking it once every beat and not really adding much to it apart from at the last bar. But this is how it sounds by itself. These are also the chords you see over and over again on the internet and together with the verses these five chords are pretty much the first five chords every beginning guitarist will learn. But now to that second guitar because that guitar is doing something different. It's adding something to the chords making them sound so much fuller and rich. This guitar is really focusing on the top two strings constantly playing that high G note over everything and it sounds well by itself it sounds like this. If we sort of merge the two guitars into one, we get the following chords. A minor 7, F and 9, C, G, Sus4. And this sounds great played on just one guitar, but two guitars? But the real magic happens when we bend one to the left and one to the right. And together they create more than the sum of the parts. And then halfway we add the piano that takes over that high G note the guitar is playing, all while the guitars are rising to a crescendo, almost distorting in tone. And in the last chorus, the strings join in, making it even more melancholic. Everything is distorted, falling apart. Guitar 2 now rising to a higher register. All while that deep broken voice is singing about regret. Now everyone playing at full volume, everything breaking up and falling apart. If I could start again, a million miles away, I would keep myself. I would find a way. Just months after the release of this song, Johnny Cash would pass on 12 September 2003, leaving us with one of the most beautiful songs ever to be recorded. And I think it's great to see that sometimes the extraordinary can be found in the ordinary. It isn't perfect and it sounds so simple, but at the same time it's a complex web of sounds and it's so well done. And that's precisely where the beauty lies, because although his voice isn't perfect, there's some roughness to the instruments, maybe this is actually the perfect way to tell a story about pain and regret. And for this song to be one of the last ones he sang with that broken baritone voice, it's a beautiful way to look back at the life of this great artist and the huge legacy that he left us with. 
anyway. So if you love the acoustic guitar, just like I do, you want to learn more about playing this awesome instrument, I've made a guitar course called Acoustic Adventure, where you can navigate yourself between your favorite playing styles and choose where you want to go from there. There's fingerstyle, there's blues, there's strumming, there's chords, there's everything you ever wanted to know about the acoustic guitar, all with detailed lessons, videos, and tabs, making learning the instrument a lot of fun. Anyway, feel free to check it out at AcousticAdventure.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love making this video. Please have a listen to it. It's such a wonderful song, and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye.